All right, I'm trying something over here. So I have uh, talented designers that give me that spec for buttons. And you can see that there's a size of default and large. We have an icon position. You have my daughter singing in the background. <laughs> there's a tone that is highlight or accent and then status for idle, hover or active. And I went to my new best friend, chat GPT version 4, model 4, GPT 4. And I said in English, scaffold a React TypeScript and Tailwind button component that has following props. Notice I didn't give the name of the props on purpose, kind of just see what it does. Size, icon, emphasis, uh, I just explain how permanent because I don't know if you would understand. The rest tone status is pretty straightforward. Let's ascend it and see what it comes up with. I suspect the code might be a bit outdated since uh, GPT is meant to be trained on data up to September 2021. But I also call bluff because sometimes I do stuff with Astro and it works remarkably with like uh, APIs that are definitely older than 21. All right, so here's a props interface with the size, icon position, emphasis, tone, status. They are all uh, optional with the question mark. So I imagine it will destructure, when it destructures the props, it's gonna have defaults like that, yes. So far, that's probably exactly what I would have done. And now I'm expecting an object, which is what I teach in the Tailwind workshop, to have um, options for each prop. Okay, so it's doing a switch statement, which is the same approach in a different way. I like to do just a flat lookup object and then type it as a record of the prop uh, type. Yeah, man. Uh, like I said, I feel like I'm going to copy that in code and it's going to work pretty nicely. And then, of course, it's just making up styles. The, I didn't say anything about the colors. But as a placeholder scaffolding, I think it's pretty good. And this is the, like anything that I do with chat GPT-4 gives me that level of like, I used to be completely mind blown and I'm like, yep, yep, that's, <laughs> that's what you do. I'm kind of like expecting. All right, so now we have these functions and it's gonna just call it and call the name of the prop past. So if we have icon position, icon before, uh, it's gonna get that string from the switch statement. Get size classes, get icon position classes. Yep. I usually don't do functions and getters. I literally have, like I said, objects and then I go uh, button classes, I go like tone classes, brackets, uh, tone for the prop, and it does the same. And there's a button, uh, it hasn't spread the extra props. So if you want to pass disabled or stuff like this, you need to add this. But overall, man, I gotta say, it looks like it's pretty good. And there, it's done. I'm gonna stop the video here, but I'll try uh, copy and paste that as is and then I'll start recording again to show you what it looks like and what I would change. See you soon. All right, I'm back. So I have literally copied exactly the code that it gave me for the button. In this file, I created a button component and I just pasted exactly what he said. I found a few issues, but I'll show you in a bit, but I've copied that exactly like it was. And then when I wanted to actually consume the button, I went in the index page, here and I was like I started making a couple of buttons and I was like you know what let's ask chat GPT to make a list of all the possible variants so here I said give me a button like you would consume it for each possible permutation and sure enough it did all of this I've done a silly thing is I asked it to have a status but really this idle hover active is not really a prop that you pass it's like the HTML state, like if you hover on the button or click on the button. So I shouldn't have made, now it's made permutation for that as if you're gonna pass the status as a prop. But what I found pretty cool is it's still for the hover actually styled hover classes and active styled active classes. So there's a bunch of weird things. For example, 
BG accent, BG highlight doesn't exist uh, in Tailwind by default. But I could definitely say, hey, you use that class, it doesn't exist. And actually I can show you if I do that and I go and address the situation, you gave me this class that does not exist in Tailwind. No more context. It's probably gonna say, oh yeah, you need to go in your Tailwind config file and he always apologize. And then it's gonna tell me how to do it in the config file. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yep. It's gonna extend the theme colors and add BG accent. See, so that's what I mean by 2021. This is completely out of date now, but uh, ChatGPT is trained on 2021 data, which is how you would do it back then. But now it's gonna extend the theme and add the background color. Yeah, so it tells here, here where you put the color and it's gonna replace, yep, perfect. So you can see how even if you don't get the perfect answer from the first prompt, um, it's gonna tell you how to get there eventually. So you can work alongside. It's really like a, a rubber duck on steroids that you can ask questions, you can train, gets better with time. All right, uh, we had enough of this. Let me show you what it looks like. So in the index page, I have created, I've, again, I've copied exactly what it gave to me, uh, but I've realized later on that it's uh, all the text colors. Remember, we didn't pass any style opinions, so it just made stuff up. Uh, everything was white text, so I've just put a black background with some padding behind it. Let's take a look. If I go in my localhost 3001, <laughs> these are the buttons. So default large is a bit larger. Look at this, I like it. The hover status has a hover and the active status has an active status. And this one has all the props under the sun. This is definitely not usable as is, but I tell you what, that scaffolding here, the props API, uh, I might change this, but it gives you a good uh, head start. And then getting all these, passing button. This is definitely a nice little scaffold that gets you going. The stuff to change, but it's pretty good uh, compared to looking at a blank screen. All right, uh, up and onwards, is it? Up onwards and upwards? I don't know. See ya.